in this segment, we will look at uh, the operation of uh, three-phase uh, thyristor converters and its application in uh, high-voltage high DC uh, transmission systems. So very quickly reviewing, uh, well, uh, directly going to this three-phase uh, thyristor converter circuit, it consists of thick six thyristors and uh, they are labeled uh, in the sequence in which they conduct. And uh, once again, we will simplify our analysis first by ignoring this inductance L sub S as done here and uh, by assuming this current ID to be a, some constant current ID over here like this. So you can see that uh, uh, these three thyristors make up the top group and we'll call the point at which all these uh, three cathodes are connected as P and uh, these uh, three thyristors in the bottom consist of the bottom group and uh, where all these three anodes are connected of these three thyristors as N here. So V sub D is equal to V P N minus V N N here. All right. Uh, so let's uh, once again assume, uh, I visualize that these uh, thyristors are replaced by diodes, okay? And uh, remember that L sub S is zero on the AC side. So as soon as if uh, a phase voltage, incoming phase voltage is uh, maximum, the diode connected to that would begin to conduct. So here in phase A, uh, one is connected and then as soon as B becomes ma maximum, then three would conduct. And uh, then when C becomes maximum, uh, five would conduct. And on the bottom side, uh, uh, you know, when B is most negative, uh, six would conduct. When uh, uh, phase C is most negative, then two. And uh, when uh, phase A is most negative, four would conduct. So you can see that these things are conducting in the sequence one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how we label them, okay? So <clears throat> when uh, A is uh, most positive and diode one is conducting, uh, we get this waveform for IA. And when uh, phase A is most negative, four is conducting. So here one is conducting, here four is conducting, and we get uh, this particular uh, segment here, but but in between uh, some other uh, uh, some uh, other thyristor thyristors are conducting, so the current is zero here in phase A. So as far as the current coming in to phase A or through phase A is uh, uh, shown here, and we can also see what happens to B and C. These waveforms are just 120 degrees displaced. So at any instant of time. You can see that uh, uh, two, uh, two diodes are conducting, one from the top group, one from the bottom group, okay? So, uh, uh, and uh, we can also see what this voltage on the DC side would look like. It's, uh, th this is uh, the top curve here corresponds to voltage at point P, the bottom curve here corresponds to voltage at point N, and the difference of these two waveforms is plotted over here, and uh, during uh, this has six pulses, so it's just it's called a six pulse waveform. And uh, if you take this uh, sixty degree interval, uh, it uh, consists of uh, line to line voltage. Okay, and uh, which two lines? Well, that shifts from one sixty degree segment to another, and we can calculate what the average of this output DC voltage would be. All right, so now let's uh, put these thyristors back in and you can see that uh, thyristor one should have started conducting over here. That would have been its instant of natural conduction if it were a diode. But if you introduce this delay angle alpha in gating that uh, thyristor one uh, by this amount with respect to this instant of time, then uh, uh, you know th this thyristor five has to keep on conducting and uh, the output voltage V sub D would follow uh, 
this waveform to here. And only when we uh, gate thyristor 1 that uh, uh, it will begin to conduct and in this case instantaneously assuming L sub S equal to 0 and uh, the voltage at point P would look like this here. So we can follow this for the other thyristors and uh, each one is delayed by this angle, same angle alpha with respect to its instant of natural conduction and uh, we can also apply this to uh, thyristors in the bottom group and uh, we get a waveform at point N to be looking like this over here, okay. So the line to line voltage then, uh, I'm sorry, not, uh, well, uh, the output DC voltage which is the difference between this and this we can obtain by looking at uh, the top curve we get and the bottom curve we get and uh, <coughs> what is happening to the current uh, waveforms on the AC side, uh, I sub A would have started to flow over here at this instant of time, but it's delayed by this angle alpha, okay. So whatever waveform we would have gotten with uh, diodes, uh, it's now uh, displaced by this angle alpha uh, because of uh, thyristors and how we are introducing this uh, delay into their conduction over here, okay. So <clears throat> once again in this case uh, we can obtain the, the average uh, DC voltage. Uh, first we, we know that if uh, we were to replace all uh, thyristors by diodes, then just by looking at one 60 degree segment from minus pi over 6 to uh, pi over 6 and dividing it by that 60 degrees which is pi over 3, uh, we can obtain this, this expression here. So that's VD0 assuming that there is no delay angle as would be the case if we had diodes in place of thyristors. But uh, because of this uh, delay angle alpha, uh, there is a reduction in output DC voltage and that is equal to so many volt radians. Again, these are in radians. So, so many volt radians are reduced every 60 degrees. So, we can obtain that uh, by integrating this waveform from 0 to, uh, if uh, we consider this to be 0 and we consider this to be uh, alpha here, uh, we can integrate this uh, reduction and come up with this expression over here. So the bottom line is that uh, the net average output voltage VD alpha would be uh, this term minus this term which gives us this term over here, okay. So you can see here that uh, the average DC output voltage can be controlled by means of this angle alpha and cosine alpha here. Okay, so next thing we'll do is we will look at uh, uh, this uh, effect of having AC side inductance L sub S and uh, finite uh, current commutation angle which in the previous case was assumed to be 0 because L sub S was 0. So here let's say that initially <coughs> uh, 5 is conducting here. So let's not worry about the, in the bottom group, 6 is conducting, this current is flowing back like this, but initially the current was flowing through thyristor 5 like this over here, okay. And uh, uh, so what's going to happen when we gate this thyristor 1, the current in thyristor 5 would decrease from ID to 0, this current here would go from ID to 0 and this current here would go from 0 to ID here. So uh, you know, the net current here uh, has to remain equal to ID. So as this current decreases, this current is increasing here. And uh, during that interval, uh, the voltage at this point we can show is the uh, is uh, really the average of the two voltages here, this VPN uh, waveform 
would be just in the middle of the two waveforms. And uh, if uh, we had zero inductance, this V sub D waveform would have jumped over here. But because of this uh, inductance here, it's uh, it's over here, uh, and therefore we are losing this area A sub U in terms of volt radians. So this A sub U can be calculated from <coughs> uh, alpha to alpha plus U, where the current uh, in thyristor 1 is rising and the current in thyristor 1 is falling to 0. And uh, so integrating that, uh, we find that it's equal to uh, this here. So that, that's the, the area in volt radians uh, that uh, must be uh, applied across uh, uh, these inductors to make the change in current happen. And uh, this area is being lost every every 60 degrees, so we have to divide that by uh, pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, uh, to get this uh, reduction in average voltage, which is given by this expression here. Okay. So, you know, I don't know if I said it correctly, but uh, the voltage uh, at point P during this uh, commutation interval is really in between uh, these two waveforms over here, here and here. So, uh, having calculated this uh, area A sub U and dividing it by pi over 3 to get this uh, reduction, uh, we can then obtain the average voltage uh, value in this case where we have uh, finite delay angle and finite commutation and interval. So we start with this VD0 and uh, when these two combine, we had calculated them to be this and then we have extra reduction due to this factor over here. So this gives us the, the average voltage in the presence of uh, finite delay angle and finite uh, commutation interval. So here we can approximate the current harmonics to be inversely proportional to their harmonic order. Uh, we can say approximately speaking anyway, uh, this uh, angle by which the fundamental frequency component of the input current lags behind the phase voltage to be approximated by this, and uh, therefore the reactive power is given by this expression here. So we can see its uh, application in HVDC systems, uh, where we have, uh, you know, AC1 here, and uh, we want to take power from here, uh, generate power here, boost it up by means of transformers and then uh, rectify from AC to DC. We have this long transmission line. And then at the receiving end, we take this uh, DC and invert it into AC. And then by, we step it down to connect it to AC2 here. So that's the nature of these uh, high voltage DC <coughs> transmission systems. <coughs> and <coughs> in, in these systems, the power can flow in either direction here. So we have uh, two types of these uh, HVDC systems. One of them is so-called uh, current link, okay? And this is what we are looking at here uh, using thyristors. But the other one is using the voltage link, and that is very similar to, uh, you know, this voltage link systems that we have talked about. So we will just, uh, concentrate on this one here in this segment. And uh, quite often the structure looks like this here, that we have a positive pole with respect to ground. Both sides need not be, wouldn't be grounded here. And uh, then we have a negative pole right here. And, uh, and these uh, poles are generally made up of uh, two uh, thyristor inverters connected in series. Uh, one is supplied through a YY transformer and one by a Y delta transformer. And that introduces, uh, uh, this Y delta introduces a 30 degree uh, phase shift in the output voltage and thereby the six pulse operation for the voltage here and the current here uh, 
from 6 pulse, it becomes 12 pulse. And uh, the consequence is that it uh, results in reduction in uh, harmonics, both on the voltage side, on the, on, in voltage on the voltage side and in input current on the AC side. So a, a, a practical system is shown here by a one line diagram, this uh, CU HVDC scheme. And uh, you can see that it's uh, pretty much like it, except uh, there are a lot more details that uh, go into it. There are some filtering which is necessary because of the harmonics uh, that are present in the current on the AC side, and we cannot let that go on to the AC system. So the here, this could be on AC1 here, uh, or maybe I should write it here, AC1 and AC2 over here. And power flow here, of course, uh, can be bidirectional. So that is what's shown here in this uh, uh, simplified uh, circuit here, where uh, we have two thyristor converters, uh, one pointing up and one pointing down, and uh, we will define the the voltages uh, to be uh, positive at the, uh, where the thyristors are pointing up. So you can see VD one is defined to be positive here, V2 is defined to be positive over here. And uh, so we know the expressions for VD1 and VD2, uh, they can be controlled by a delay angle in this converter by alpha 1 and this control, converter by alpha 2. And uh, uh, given these polarities, we can see that ID on an average basis, this inductor plays no role. Uh, this ID is equal to VD1 plus VD2, not minus VD2, but VD1 plus VD2 divided by this resistance R sub D over here, okay. So, you know, we'll operate uh, one of these converters, for example, VD1 in the rectifier mode, so VD1 is positive. We'll operate VD2 in an inverter mode, so that is negative, okay. Uh, so, uh, we can see how we can control this ID in this uh, circuit over here. So this brings us to the end of this uh, segment uh, where we have looked at uh, uh, three-phase uh, thyristor converters and its application in high-voltage DC systems. <laughs>